Well, it's an exciting weekend. Uh, it's a historical trip by President Xi, the first by a Chinese leader in 28 years, and his first overseas trip after being re-elected this year. We saw a total of 13 agreements being signed, from energy to tourism to commerce to technology. Ours is the only one in financial services, and we're very happy to have the Jiangsu government setting up a financial services platform here to serve the investment and financing needs of Chinese enterprises going overseas. So how many Chinese businesses do you think that we're going to see here in Abu Dhabi in the coming years? How quickly is this going to grow? We already have a lot of Chinese enterprises here. We do have Chinese financial institutions operating in Abu Dhabi and Abu Dhabi global markets. We're going to see much more of those. In the last three months alone, we have signed an agreement with Shanghai Stock Exchange for them to set up a Belt and Road Exchange here in Abu Dhabi global market. This is the second key milestone project that we have delivered. Uh, in the last three months since our office opening in May in Beijing. So we are extremely happy. We are looking forward to much more cooperation with the Chinese. Richard, uh, good morning. Belt and Road, uh, that is clearly going to be a major driver of uh, RMB-denominated trade activity. I was wondering if you could uh, put some numbers on it in terms of flows, in terms of daily volume. Uh, what do you happen to be targeting within a three- to five-year time horizon? Just looking in the immediate future for this Jiangsu government financial services platform, they are looking at at least two billion in terms of investment and financing needs of the Chinese enterprises setting up in Halifa Industrial Abu Dhabi. Um, in the future, as China continues to expand its footprint, as China continues to establish much more presence in this region, Middle East, North Africa, South Asia. And with more Belt and Road initiative coming through, uh, we are looking at a much higher num number, obviously. Abu Dhabi Global Markets is establishing ourselves as a financing and investment hub for Belt and Road initiative and, of course, as a Renminbi offshore uh, clearing centre. Uh, with all due respect, Richard, uh, aren't you a little bit late to the party because uh, London has been uh, a Renminbi clearing centre for quite some time, as has uh, Luxembourg, as has Hong Kong. So. What does Abu Dhabi have to offer? As have Singapore. Um, so there are many different renminbi offshore clearing center. Abu Dhabi is served as an important gateway and hub in the Middle East, North Africa, South Asia region, with Chinese enterprises coming on on hold here with much greater footprint by Chinese enterprises and with our collaboration and strategic partnership with the Chinese government, with different government agencies. Our Beijing office serves both inflow, inbound as well as outbound traffic, and we are tying up with both Chinese institutions coming here, expanding their presence into this region, the exciting opportunities that this region offer, as well as helping Middle East, UAE-based uh, enterprises expanding their footprint in China. Patrick, when you look at this more from a strategic outlook as well, for the UAE in particular, the idea that, that the Chinese Premier came here, he didn't go to Saudi Arabia, he came right here to Abu Dhabi. Talk to me a little bit about that, what that means in terms of that strategic relationship, because obviously we've seen over the last several years in particular a shift to Asia coming from Saudi Arabia, from the UAE as well. A lot of questions about what that means with, for the relationship with Washington, but what are the advantages there to having this kind of economic diplomacy taking place between China and the UAE? Well, we are extremely happy with what is happening here. Uh, it shows that Abu Dhabi is one of the ideal places to set up a hub to serve the exciting opportunities that this region offer. UAE is really one of the largest bilateral trading partners with China. This year, bilateral trade is expected to top 58 billion, and UAE is the largest investment destination for Chinese enterprises into this region. And that's expected to increase even further with President Xi's visit. And in terms of ADGM in particular, you've seen a lot of growth over the last couple of years, a lot of excitement surrounding these tie-ups with China in particular. What happens next in terms of those relationships? You grow from strength to strength. We are only two and a half years old and we have delivered two key milestone projects by now in the last three months. We expect to deliver another four or five more from now until the middle of next year. And of course, that is not including all the private-owned enterprises that are setting up uh, offices here to serve the region. Uh, Richard, can I ask you a question about uh, sentiment in uh, Abu Dhabi and the Emirates uh, broadly? Because there is a sense that we are on the verge, if not already in, an outright uh, trade war. What is the feeling, what is the mood where you are? Well, I, th I think Abu Dhabi and China believe in the same thing. 
in believe in open trade, believe in making sure that there's common prosperity, which is what the Belt and Road Initiative uh, envisioned, uh, working towards joint economic development along Belt and Road region towards the common prosperity of all the regions involved. So we are fully supportive of that vision. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.